gentlemen. So let's stand and let's go to the word of the Lord this morning. And turn in your Bibles with me to the book of Acts. Chapter number four. I'm going to read from verses five to twelve. <clears throat> the book of Acts. It's called Acts because it's the Acts, Acts of the Apostles. It's largely a, a historical book chrono, uh, or cataloging what the apostles did after Jesus rose um, and how the church moved and established. So it's, it's a very important book for the New Testament church. At least it should be. So we're going to go to the fourth chapter, and I'm going to start in verse. Actually, let's go to verse 7. You say amen when you got it. Verse 7, and it says this, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Today, I want to talk to you about the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Praise God. Let's pray and ask the Lord to have his way in this place. Come on, if you want the will of God to be done, help me to pray right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you here today for the powerful testimonies that we've heard from your people, Lord God. I thank you here today that your spirit is among us, Lord, that you've gathered us together here, Lord God. And I pray here today that you would help me, Lord God, to preach and to teach under the unction of the Holy Ghost, Lord God, to the edification of all those that should hear, Lord. And I pray that you release salvation, Lord. I pray that you release deliverance, Lord God. Show miracles and signs and wonders here in this place to confirm your word. Uh, edify, Lord, and change hearts this morning, Lord. Uh, put the enemy, the devil, under our feet this morning, Lord God, uh, that we should have all the victory that you have ordained for us to have, Lord. Uh, we surrender our hearts and our minds to you right now, praying that your will would be done in this service. Uh, we're careful to give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, somebody shout amen to the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you for standing with me. Name of Jesus, probably a, 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 a seemingly we could just wrap up the sermon just by saying that because that undoubtedly if you're here, you've heard the name of Jesus. It's such a popular name. It is such a, a, a life-changing name, and definitely it has changed the world, I would argue, for, for better. Uh, people use the name of Jesus uh, in, in, in vain. They, they use it. Uh, I don't know if you're scared. Sometimes people will say Jesus when they're scared. And, you know, we just shout the name of Jesus. They even say, oh, geez, which is just a shortened form of, of Jesus. Or geez Louise. Anybody ever heard that one? <laughs> this is just a shortened form. And it's such of our American vernacular that, we, that there is a danger in losing the power and, and losing the revelation that comes along with the name of Jesus. Amen. The name that we pronounce as Jesus is not really Jesus in the Hebrew. Uh, in the Hebrew, the term is Yeshua which is a shortened form of the word Yehoshua, which is really what you see as Joshua in the Old Testament. It means God is become salvation. Right. The shortened form of that is Yeshua, which just means salvation. Uh, for example, if you read in the Old Testament, when they were about to cross the Red Sea, and Moses says to this people, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What he told them in Hebrew was stand still and see Yeshua, Yehovah, which God will show you today. Praise God. Uh, when Isaiah writes that God has become salvation, he, it really reads, Jehovah is Yeshua. Amen. Uh, in the Greek, however, the New Testament was not written in Hebrew. The New Testament is written in Greek. And in Greek, his name is pronounced Jesus, which sounds much like the Spanish version, which is Jesus. You probably know somebody that's named Jesus. 
Um, but in English, when it's transliterated, it becomes Jesus. And the reason why, I have a very interesting book on this topic. If you like it, I'll give it to you. It's not very thick at all. It's a quick read. But it explains how, first of all, English was not even really a language that was formed and spoken during the times of Jesus Christ. And, and even if you go back five centuries ago, you wouldn't be able to understand someone that spoke English five centuries ago based off of how we say it today. But so the Y became a J and the Asus from the Greek to the Latin to English became an S. And so we have the term Jesus. But it's not in the pronunciation or semantics. When we speak that name, we're identifying the one that died on the cross. When we speak that name, we're identifying the God that was made flesh. When we speak that name, we're, we're speaking about the one that was buried in the grave. We're speaking about the one that shed blood. Praise God. We're speaking about the one that came out of the grave. We're speaking about the one that poured out his spirit. And the name that was given to him was Jesus. Because that angel Gabriel came to Mary in one portion of scripture in Luke. He said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. His name is an identification, not just of who he is, but of what he came to do. Praise God. This is why Peter said, neither is there salvation in any other name, because there's no other name under heaven given among men. That's us right here today, by which we must be saved. And so the name of Jesus, even though the world might not understand, uh, we here at the church, we know who our God is. Uh, we know who died on the cross for us. Uh, we know who shed blood for our sins. Uh, we know who is our redeemer. Uh, we know who our healer is. Uh, mm, Y'all are making me a little bit nervous this morning, like you forgot. Uh, my, uh, let me tell you, your, your doctor is not your healer. Jesus is your healer. Praise God. Your, 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 the government is not your provider. The IRS, I don't care if they gave you a refund. Uh, they're not your provider. Your job is not your provider. Jesus is. Uh, Jesus is your sustainer. Jesus is, my Bible says, he's my song. Uh, he is my strength. Uh, and it's become my salvation. Uh, he is my refuge. Come on, somebody. Uh, he is the rock in which I run to. Uh, he is my shield. Come somebody. He is my buckler. The Bible writes about him and says uh, he's the beginning uh, and the end, uh, the first uh, and the last, uh, who was and is uh, and is to come. He is Alpha and Omega. He even said, uh, I'm the root uh, and the offspring of David. Uh, so the God I'm preaching to you today, uh, he's the all-powerful God. Uh, he's El Shaddai, God uh, Almighty, robed into flesh uh, with blood that could be shed for you and I. Uh, and so when we call uh, on the name of Jesus, uh, we're not just using some American vernacular. We're not just speaking an English term. We're calling on the God of all salvation that is sitting on the throne even right now. I wish you would call on the name of Jesus and invoke his presence right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Name of Jesus. I want to kind of teach and preach. I guess I've done a little bit of preaching already. But allow me to, to just uh, go through the Bible about what the Bible says about the name. And, and hopefully I, I've done a sufficient enough job to give you the origins of the name and even why this name was spoken in the first place. But I come to tell you today that when we release the name of Jesus, we are invoking his power and authority. Amen. Amen. I want to give you some context to the scripture that we read. We read it in Acts chapter 4. This is when Peter and John had been captured by the elders and the high priest there at Jerusalem to question them how this man was healed. And so now let's look at the healing itself and see what happens. This is a chapter before. In Acts chapter number 3, verse 1, the Bible says this. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Everybody say the hour of prayer. <laughs> Amen. I'll just leave that out there. Uh, <laughs> Being the ninth hour, that means it's around, praise God, 6 p.m., if you will. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. And they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. Because if someone is lame, there's no better place to bring them to the house of God. At least you might catch someone that is convicted enough to show mercy on them and to give them some things. And so they brought him to the temple, which is uh, at the gate called Beautiful, the Bible says, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. But he wasn't expecting to receive what he's about to get. Praise God. Verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. 
Help us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. I hope your faith is rising in here today. Because if you came in here with some ailment in your body, we're still preaching the same name here today. And it's the same God we're talking about. And he's still able to do miracles and willing to do it. Praise God. At verse 8, it says that he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. The first thing we got to notice is about this. The power of God is not confined to this building. The power of God is not confined to these four walls. You don't have to bring someone to church to pray for them. As a matter of fact, I'm with Brother Ben. I think we should go out into the community and ask somebody, do you have a need? Praise God. I, I don't have any money to give you, but there's something better than money that I have, and that is a name. Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. My God, maybe we can reach more people if we ask them, are you struggling mentally? Have you been able to get some sleep lately? Are you afflicted in your body? Do you know somebody that has cancer? Let me meet you right here at Publix while you're picking the good chicken out. Hallelujah, Jesus. And let me lay a hand on you in the name of Jesus. And let's see what God will do, not inside of the temple, but right outside. I think it's time to church take this good news and this great name outside of the four walls and begin to take it out into the world and preach the name of Jesus. Praise God. Peter looked at that man and said, look, no doubt the man expected to receive money. Peter said, I don't have any money for you. Now, now, don't get me wrong. If he'd have had some money, I'm sure Peter might have gave him some money too. Now, Peter is sure to remind Paul in another portion of Scripture that we should be careful to give to the poor. So that is a ministry to the church. But he had something that was much better than money. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter was so convinced of the God he knew, of the one that hung on the cross, of the Lord that was inside of him. He said, I've got something inside of me, and I'm going to speak his name to invoke the same power and authority that Jesus had when he walked the earth. Praise God. And I've got news for you, church. When we speak that name of Jesus, we are invoking the power and the authority of God Almighty. See, I, I know you've heard the name of Jesus, but I really want today to change your perspective on how you invoke that name. you got to understand the power and the authority that's behind it, that your faith should rise to such an element where you know that when I call the name of Jesus, I'm calling the God that spoke every thing into existence. When I call the name of, oh, y'all don't believe me. The Bible says not anything that was made was made by him. So he made it all, praise God. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke to the seas. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to the earth. He spoke to the ground to bring forth herb. He spoke to the stars and put them in there. He spoke to the sun and set it in its place, and the moon and set it in its place. And he formed you from the dust of the ground. You got to understand, I'm not just going through a ritual when I get down on my knees and I begin to pray. I'm not just going through some vanity. I'm calling on the very God that saved our soul, that created all of this world, and he's got all power. He's got all authority in his name. Sometimes I think we're praying just out of ritual. Sometimes I think we're just going through the motions. Even myself go through the motions. I'm praying over my food. I got a piece of chicken, probably from Publix. Praise God, because Popeye's just fell off. Hallelujah. <laughs> but <laughs> I got a piece of chicken. Hallelujah. And I pray before I eat. I don't care where I am. I pray. It is what it is. You, you know, you do what you do. I'm going to pray before I eat. But I'll pray for it, and sometimes I'll just get to the end and say, in Jesus' name, amen. And I, I, I'm forgetting that I'm calling on that, 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 the God that saved me. Praise God. Amen. And though I don't, I, I don't think I need him to bless this chicken, if it's undercooked, I might need him to bless this chicken. <laughs> Let it nourish my body, praise God, and remove all the bacteria, praise God, and any salmonella that could be in this chicken. Hallelujah. Amen. Cook it yourself. It'll be better off. But, but I just don't want us to go through the routine of calling on the name of Jesus, just to say in Jesus' name and not understanding what we're doing, and, and just to go through a kind of a vanity. You know how you do something so much, it just doesn't mean anything to you anymore? I, 
I, I think we need to be delivered from that. And I think if we'll understand the, the power and the authority that is invoked in the name of Jesus, uh, we'll be able to get more uh, of what God has ordained for us to have. Uh, Jesus said, in my name, you'll cast out devils. Uh, in my name, you'll speak with tongues. Uh, if you lay hands on the sick and they shall uh, recover. Uh, the Bible says everything that you do in word or in deed, uh, do it all in the name of Jesus. Uh, that means when we go out as the church, uh, when we begin to pray uh, and invoke the name of Jesus, uh, it's as if God himself uh, is praying and doing the work uh, on our behalf. Uh, if you're glad about that kind of power, uh, why don't you shout the name of Jesus? Praise God. Hallelujah. Name represents power, represents authority. Hallelujah, Jesus. And, and, and so the man was healed, and the, the rest of the scripture, they go into the temple. They begin to praise God, and when Peter and John get in the temple, they fulfill their original task, which was to go and to preach Jesus unto them. And that got them into a lot of trouble. Can you imagine if they knew the man was outside lame and he's inside the temple jumping and shouting and leaping, that's going to cause quite a stir. And here you have these two apostles coming there preaching Jesus. That's really going to upset them because they just killed Jesus about 50, 60 days ago. And so this is fresh, praise God. And so they captured Peter and John. And they began to question them. And the question that they asked is this. They said, by what power or by what name have you done this? Because in their minds, Jesus is dead and gone. And in their minds, he didn't raise up from the grave. They think they just stole his body and said that he rose up from the grave. They don't believe in Jesus, but what they cannot deny is this man that is whole. What they cannot deny is that we've seen this guy every day outside, and now he's in the house of God. See, you got some haters that's looking at you. They might not believe in your God, but there's one thing that they cannot deny. I used to be addicted, but now I'm in the house of God. Y'all oh, don't want to testify with me now, huh? I used to be strung out, but now I got my right mind. I used to be bound, but now I'm free. Oh, that man said, one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. There's something that your enemy can't deny, and that is the power of God. Some of your relatives have spoken to me, Sister Missy in particular. I met her cousin the other day, and we was talking, and she said, I know. Whatever y'all did to Missy, it's working. I had to say, I ain't do nothing to her. That was the Lord that did that, praise God. Because she said the old Missy would have been done X, Y, and Z, and back to A, B, and C again, praise God. She said, but now she want to pray, and now she's encouraging me. She, she, she might not have all the revelation just yet, but you are walking, living, breathing testimony of the power of God. And I think we let the devil diminish that. You ought to give God the glory every step of the way. I used to be addicted to pornography, but now I'm free. I used to be an adulterer, but now I'm free. I used to be a liar, but now I'm free. Oh, I used to be bound, but now I'm free. I used to be sick, but now I'm healed. And I'll tell you how I did it. By what power or by what name? By the name of Jesus. Tell that testimony. <laughs> and then the guys, they couldn't deny it. They said, well, you even read the rest of the scripture. We don't have time today. But the rest of the scripture, they wanted to beat him and whoop him and tell him. But they said, if we do that, we're going we're gonna to bring shame because everybody sees that this power. We, we, we can't deny what happened. You, 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 you can come against the, the revelation. You can come against the prophecy, but you can't come against the very manifest glory of God. They cannot deny that this man was healed. And Peter was bold in front of their face. He said, it was by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the... He was very specific because he wanted him to know that same one y'all sent to the cross, that same one y'all brought false witness, the same one that you laid stripes on, the same one that you put the crown on, the same one that had stabbed in his side, the same one that you buried, the same one that you said soldiers to guard. It's by that guy that this man stands here before you hold. Which brings one thing, dead men don't work miracles. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> Muhammad is dead. He's not working no miracles. Buddha need to get on a diet program. He's not working no miracles. <laughs> Every other prophet that I know about is dead, but our God, he is alive and well. And when you call on his name, he'll respond just like he was standing right <laughs> Turned off. 
Peter rebuked them right to their face. That same Jesus whom you crucified. Jesus Christ, he identified. Because what you may not know is that there were a lot of Jesuses in that day. A lot of people named Jesus. It was a popular name. So he identified Jesus the Christ. Christ is not his name. Christ is a title. It's not like his last name. Christ means the anointed flesh. Get people in a lot of trouble doctrinally because they'll say, give praise to our God in Christ. You're thinking that's two different people. No, God is the spirit. Christ is the flesh part. Because Christ in the Greek is Christo, which means the anointed flesh. So it really means Yeshua, the anointed flesh of Nazareth. He's telling him that same Jesus. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. That it wasn't just another Jesus walking down the street. Huh? This is not Jesus from around the corner, praise God. Huh? This is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, huh? the guy that you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead. That's the power. That's the name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now, now we get to the next one. You have to know Jesus to use his name. Many people try to use the name of Jesus like a magic formula, and it don't work. <laughs> Jesus. For example, if I'm in a crowded airport, somebody starts calling my name, Brandon, Brandon, I'm probably not going to answer them. Then you got my attention, but I'm going to keep it moving. Because <laughs> if you're yelling my name in a crowded airport, I ain't nothing good coming out of that. I'm moving. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, uh, upgrade me so I can board first, please. <laughs> Amen. It's not going to work the same. But if my child calls my name, now you got my attention. Now I will respond immediately. See, there's lots of people in the world trying to call on a name of a man they don't know. Like it's a magic formula. And get upset and lose faith when it don't work. Mm. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know Jesus. Praise God. Jesus said in John chapter 10 verse 26, uh, but you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. See, in order to use this name properly, we have to have applied it and we have to know it. Romans chapter 8, verse 9. I know I'm taking you to scriptures you don't hear concerning the name of Jesus, but look at this. Romans chapter 8, verse 9 says this, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hallelujah, Jesus. So that puts some more stipulations on the name. That means you can't just be calling on God if you don't know him and he don't know you. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know this ruffle is kind of messing with your theology. And you wonder why there's some people that can pray in the name of Jesus and stuff happens. And some people just kind of call on it and nothing happens. Why some ministries be calling the name of Jesus like there's power with a lot of energy and charisma. Praise God, but no anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Now we're getting down to why people are still struggling, why people are still bound, going to ministry after ministry, never getting no healing, because ain't nobody in the building got a real relationship. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. But I'm glad I'm in a church that knows how to call on the name of Jesus. You might not like us all the time, but I guarantee you when you want to get a prayer through to God, you're going to find somebody that got a relationship. You're going to find somebody to say, I ain't got no money. Silver and gold have I none, but I've been in a prayer room, and i got a relationship with God. I've been baptized in his name. I put on Christ according to Galatians 3.27. Hallelujah, I've been filled with the spirit of Christ. He's in me, and I know when I call on the name of Jesus, my God hears me. My God will answer me. My God will respond, because I am known of him, and he knows me. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to know him to have his name. You got to know him to use his name. Praise God. We got to know who that God is, who Jesus is. I know that people say, well, the Holy Trinity. I have news for you. There is no Trinity in your Bible anywhere. The word Trinity is not found. The term God the Son is never any, anywhere in your Bible. The term God the Holy Ghost is nowhere in your Bible. What we do here is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. And at the birth of Jesus, Gabriel said uh, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin uh, shall be with child uh, and shall bring forth a son, uh, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, uh, which being interpreted is God uh, with us. Ooh, uh, John said it like this, In the beginning was the Word, uh, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, the same was in the beginning with God. Uh, all things were made by him, uh, and without him was not anything made that was made. Uh, verse 14 says that word uh, was made flesh uh, and dwelt among us. Uh, praise God. So it's not just a, a God junior, uh, another God sitting beside him uh, because Isaiah told us, uh, he said, I am the Lord uh, and beside me there is no Savior. Uh, nobody beside him. That wasn't just the Son of God. Uh, that was God uh, made uh, flesh come down uh, and hips on uh, Come down uh, as flesh uh, to die upon a cross uh, to have blood for you and I. You got to know who Jesus is. I'm not calling on the second part of no trinity. I'm calling on the great I am. I'm calling on what Jesus said, the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. He said, I'm the root and the offspring of David. There is nobody else. Praise God. And Revelation tells me that there is a throne in heaven. And in the midst of the throne is a lamb as it had been slain. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed flesh. Not three gods, just one God. Hallelujah. Got to know who he is. Praise God. Got to know who he is. This is what I love. I love Gospel of John is my favorite gospel. Gospel of John, he writes his gospel last. Because he was he outlived all the other apostles. Everybody else is dead and gone. They tried to kill John. They couldn't do it. They tried to boil him in oil. And they couldn't do it. So the, they exiled him to the island of Patmos where he got the story of the book of Revelation. So what you're seeing, he's in the spirit on the Lord's Day, which is a Sunday, by the way. That's why we worship on Sunday. It's not a Sabbath, New Sabbath. Sunday would have been the day that Jesus rose. Right. So it became the custom of the New Testament church to worship on Sunday. That's where that comes from. I can give you a Bible study on that later. But he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. And God, God begins to deal with John. And after that, he begins to pin his gospel. And his gospel is the last one. He doesn't bother including details from the other gospels. There's no parables in the gospel of John. There's, there's none of that in there because all that has been spoken and cataloged already. But there are statements in the Gospel of John to show you who Jesus is. It's the only gospel with the I am statement. Praise God. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Said the, the computer going to praise. <laughs> if you won't praise him, God is able to raise up. <laughs> hey man, I'm having too much fun. Let's go. John chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. John 11, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. John 10, he said, I am the good shepherd. John 14, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 15, he said, I am the true vine. Seven I am statements in total. Whew, hallelujah. And that I am uh, was the name that God gave to Moses to go tell them. He said, you go tell them I am has sent you. And so we read it as a noun and a verb, but that's not a noun and a verb. It's not just ego I me, which is the Greek version. It is the I am. Oh, hallelujah. And Jesus got himself into a little bit of trouble with the elders and the Pharisees and scribes and priests because he declared this in John chapter 8, verse 56. He said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now, wait a minute. That presents a problem. Abraham lived thousands of years ago. And so they said in verse 57, then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Woo. It's not just a noun and a verb he was using. That's the I am that he spoke to Moses. That's the great I am that parted that Red Sea. You're not getting it just yet. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Then we know that they understood what he was saying because the Bible says they took up stones to cast at him. 
Why would they do that? Because Jesus had themselves, according to them, had blasphemed. What you mean? You're the I am. You're the one that spake to Noah. You're the one that spake to Abraham. You're the one that spake to Jacob. You were the one at the top of the ladder. You were the one that parted the Red Sea. That blood of the lamb was all you. The water from the rock was all you. The manna from heaven was all you. Hallelujah. The mountain of smoke was all you. Crossing the Jordan was all you. You mean that giant that David killed was you? Yes. Hallelujah. They didn't believe it, Brother Reggie. It was blasphemous to them. And I'm telling you today, when you call on the name of Jesus, even the Christmas song says, he's the great I am. He's not a third person of a trinity. He's not a second person of a trinity. He is God Almighty, robed in flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus said in John, again, Philip, Philip, his disciple, has a question because Jesus is talking about the Father, the Father, the Father. And Philip, so Philip says this in John chapter 14, verse 8, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. He's like, he's like let's see him. He keeps talking about the Father. Amen. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. Now imagine if you're a Trinitarian and you get up to heaven, which I doubt that'll happen, but we'll see. Praise God. And you get up there, because uh, in that same scripture, Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. Okay. <laughs> we don't preach that, but it's, it's, in that, it's in that word. That's the word of Jesus. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am, you will die. Oh, hallelujah. But suppose you get up there and you say, okay, you're at judgment. You say, okay, Jesus, show us the Father. Where's he at? Jesus would have to say to you, same thing he said to Philip. It's been about 2,000 years. How many Bibles have been sold? How many times have you been to church? How many times have you heard the preacher? You've had a whole lifetime to get in this word. And yet thou hast not known me, he that hath seen me. Ah, even the heathen had to bow before that statement. Mm. John chapter 18. This is recorded only in the gospel of John because, again, John is writing to show you who Jesus is. So John chapter 18 is his recording of the betrayal and the arrest. And so look at this. John 18 verse 4. Is this okay? This little Bible? Okay. Praise God. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Who seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am. Now, the he's italicized because they added that in there for clarity. Because you can't say I am and have a full sentence. So the translators added the he in there. In every version I have is italicized, meaning it's not in the original manuscript. And we know it. And Jesus, J Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he said unto them, I am, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Ooh, hallelujah. Jesus said, I am. Ooh. I hear Paul say, every knee should bow. And every tongue should confess. <laughs> Whether things in heaven, y'all don't get it, whether things in earth, I feel like preaching now, or whether things beneath the earth, that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. There's not another one. There's not a second one. There's only one God. There's only one Savior. There's only one King. There's only one Lord. And his name is Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody say that name, Jesus. Jesus. Ooh, now you know when you pray the name you're calling on. Now you know when you get into a little bit of trouble and your car is about to go off on the side of the road. Ooh, you're not just doing an American vernacular or idiom. You're calling on the God Almighty. You're calling on El Sentai. Now you know the name to call on when your babies are sick and the doctors don't have no medicine for you. Oh, hallelujah. You parents are sending your child off to college. Now you know what name to call over them while they're away from your house out in this dark world. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. Ooh, the righteous run in and we are saved. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I hasten to a close. Jesus is the only saving name. That's, his name means, literally, Jesus. And we have to understand this. This is why his name was given, Jesus. Mary didn't choose that name. Joseph didn't choose that name. That angel told Gabriel, the one that said, I stand before the God. He said, you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save. Now, the Hebrew language is very beautiful. The names mean something. And, and tradition is they are named according to what their, the meaning is. A beautiful example is Jacob. His name means surplanter. If you study that story, he was a trickster. Okay? Every preacher in the world has preached about Judah. <laughs> okay? When he was sent, the tribe of Judah was sent out before during the battle to win the battle. And Judah's name means praise. So the, so the idea is that you send praise first, God will fight your battles. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, it is what it is. The name, the name Dan means God is my judge. So Daniel means God is my judge judge. You go and study the prophet's names, Isaiah and Obadiah. And every time you see that ayah, it's actually Yahuwah, which, which is an attribute of what God. So each prophet is named that is named something as a character towards, towards God. It's a beautiful language. And there's revelation it just, just in the names that people have. And so they're continuing this revelation when the angel speaks to Mary and said, you're going to call his name Jesus because it means Savior. It means salvation. And that's the reason why he came. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2, he writes this, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Now, we've learned that the Old Testament is written in what language? Hebrew. So every time you see salvation, you're really seeing Jesus' name, Yeshua. And so what he's saying is, Jehovah is my strength and song, and Jehovah is Yeshua. Okay? Praise God. Same thing as Isaiah chapter 43, verse 11. This really exposes the Trinity. Verse 11 says, I, even I am the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's the Jehovah or Yahweh, whatever you want to call it, however you pronounce it. He said, and beside me there is no Yeshua. <laughs> ain't but one. It ain't but one. It ain't but one. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The prophet says this, for unto us a child is born. Y'all hearing this? Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It's all in Jesus. They call apostolics Jesus only. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ain't making no apologies for it. <laughs> Praise God. Because when I call on him, he actually answers in response. And it, it works. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Paul warned the church. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. He says, a warning. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Got a lot of philosophers. YouTube has uh, created so many philosophers. Some people don't know what they're talking about. And vain deceit after the tradition. How many know there's thousands of years of church tradition that is not biblical? Praying to Mary, praying to saints. It's not biblical. That's idolatry, actually. Three crosses. Where is that in the Bible? The other two crosses was thieves. We're glorifying thieves now. And they even got some hospitals with Jesus still on the cross. I'm like, take him off of there. My God ain't on that cross no more. Uh, I know, these are just pet peeves of mine. Forgive me. <laughs> they forgive me. But they're traditions. And you'd be surprised how many people are so caught in their traditions that when they hear the truth, they will reject it because this is what we've always done. Mm. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, uh, and not after Christ. Remember, Christ is Christo, the anointed flesh. For he says, verse 9, for in him, in that anointed flesh, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. This is why I don't got a call on three different gods. 
There's only one name given to that anointed flesh. And that name that was given was Jesus. It's all in him. All the fullness of the Godhead dwells in the body of Jesus Christ. And that name that was given, it means salvation. So then the whole purpose was that name should be able to save us. How then does that name save us? Matthew 28, verse 19. The only scripture I can find in the whole Bible where the term Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is in the same scripture. But it's talking about the name. <laughs> verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations. Got to teach. <laughs> Amen. The preaching is not enough. Get in the Bible study. <laughs> Baptizing them in the name, one name, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Let me ask you a question. What's the name of the Son? Jesus. Hmm. Acts chapter 2, verse 30. That, that's the commandment. Peter was sitting there. John was sitting there. Philip was sitting there. Bartholomew was sitting there. Judas was sitting there. The other Judas was sitting there. Praise God. All of them were sitting right there. They were listening to this instruction. And the Bible says this. This is the fulfillment of it. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeshua, Amashiach, Jesus Christus, for the remission of sins. Ooh, hallelujah. That's why we emphasize baptism, not in titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Those are his titles. That's not his name. Peter knew we're going to apply the name. And when you apply the name, it is able to remove all sin. And he said, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's all in Jesus. It's all in Jesus. That's why Jesus, Peter said, when they said, okay, tell me how this guy's healed. How'd you do it? By what power or by what name have you done this? Peter said, look, if we be questioned this day about the good deed done to that impotent man, be it known unto you and to all the elders of Jerusalem that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God has raised up from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. Then he declared the powerful statement, this is the stone that was set at naught. That's the scripture from Isaiah because Isaiah prophesied that they would reject the cornerstone. And Peter identified and said, that Jesus, he's the stone. Remember Jesus said, upon this rock, this is the stone that is set of naught of you builders. How would you have rejected, which has become the corner? Neither is there salvation in There's no other way to be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> So if you are baptized in titles, you need to get baptized again in the name of Jesus. Because there's no other name that can save you. Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must, not an option, must be saved. Jesus is the saving name of God. Come on, let's stand here today. I'm closing at this. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. We as this church exist right here in South Tampa to tell everybody that may have been on in another ministry. I was in a Baptist church growing up. Nazarene Baptist, Evansville, Indiana. At the age of seven years old, I was baptized. And the Baptist organization, all of them baptized in the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Methodist organization, all of them repeat the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You may not know why. It's because it is a creed established by the church fathers going way back to 6, 700 A.D. That's why. And if they choose to baptize in Jesus' name, they will be excommunicated from their organization. So if you were baptized in any of those churches, more than likely they did it wrong. But I'm coming here to tell you today, just like I had the opportunity at the age of 26, I heard the same message I'm preaching to you today. I heard the same name I'm preaching to you today. And I said, I'm not going to. I'm not going to let ignorance 
and pride keep me out of heaven. Praise God. And I got rebaptized over again. And I went down in the name of Jesus. But I didn't just get wet that time. I came up with all my burdens lifted. I came up being washed. See, some people know what I'm talking about. They've been down in the name of Jesus. And I have been living for God ever since because I took on the name of Christ. It put me in him. And then he filled me with the Holy Ghost, which put him in me. And the same opportunity is here for you today. Preacher, I never heard this before. That's good. Now's your day. This is the good news of the gospel. Maybe you got it a different way. I know and understand all of us have different types of experiences as it comes to Christianity. I'm not negating none of that. It got you to where you are today. Praise God for it. But now you've got a choice. I'm going to get it right in Jesus' name. I'm going to get the name of Jesus. Paul said, if you've been baptized, you put on Christ. He said, we're buried with him in baptism. Oh, praise God that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, so should we also walk in newness of life. This baptism, I'm telling you here today, this name of Jesus has power to remove your sin. It's got power to heal your body. It's got power to bring peace into your life. Oh, it's got power to resurrect you. It's got power to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And God's not hiding it anymore. It's available for you here today. If you want it, come and get it in Jesus' name. Altar workers, let's go ahead and get in place. I invite you to come today. If you've never heard this before, if you've never been baptized, even if you're unsure, let's do it right. There's no harm. No harm. Doesn't mean you're a bad person before. Doesn't mean you didn't believe before. It just, it just means we, we're going to get a little bit better. And it, it doesn't hurt anything. What's it hurt to get it right? What's it hurt to get it right? Amen. I got to get the name of Jesus. Open up these altars today. If you need healing in your body, we're going to call on the name of Jesus. I've seen him work. He'll work. If you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost, we're going to call on the name of Jesus. And God will pour out his spirit. Whatever you need today, it's all in the name of Jesus. So let's begin to pray right now. And as we're praying, feel free to make your way to this altar. No condemnation. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now, Lord. Oh, God, that you've given us this revelation here today. I thank you, Lord God, that you've opened it up towards us, Lord. And I thank you, Lord God, for the sacrifice that you paid, Lord. Father, and I pray here amongst your people here today, Lord, oh God, that every heart would be convicted here today, Lord God, that would be drawn towards you, Lord Jesus, that we now know better, Lord God. So help us, Lord God, to do better, Lord. I pray, Lord God, against all the enemy that's fighting every mind right now in the name of Jesus. And I forbid him to operate up over this place, Lord. But I pray, Lord God, as we begin to invoke that name, that you, Lord, would respond according to your power, Lord, and according to your love for your people here today. I come against every affliction and disease in this place, Lord. And I pray that you heal it in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Everything, Lord God, that the enemy has sent against us to afflict our bodies, Lord. I curse it in the name of Jesus right now, oh God. Every demon, Lord God, that seeks to oppress the people of God, I curse it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I speak that name, Lord God, over our children and over our teenagers, Lord God. Lord God, keep them surrounded, Lord God, in covenant, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray right now, oh God, against everything, Lord God, that would cause us to stumble, Lord. Lord, and rebuke it in the name of Jesus, oh God. But I pray right now in this place that you would begin to pour out of your spirit, Lord God, upon all flesh, Lord God, like your promise, oh God. But there are those here in this place that are struggling with depression, Lord God. I pray that you heal them in the name of Jesus. There are those here amongst us, Lord God, that are struggling with offense. I pray right now that you heal it in the name of Jesus, oh God. There are those among us, Lord God, that are struggling with unforgiveness, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you touch them in the name of Jesus. We invoke your name that is above every other name, Lord God, and that the demons should tremble at that name here today, Lord God. But Father, I pray right now that you release the anointing at the call and mention of your name, Lord God. Let it destroy every yoke of the enemy, Lord God. Let it encourage and bring life to every soul. Let it bring healing to 
every broken vessel. Let it bring salvation to every lost soul in this place today, oh God. We lift up you, oh God. We lift up the only saving name, Jesus, Lord God. Have your way amongst your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on now, it's your time to pray. <laughs> These altars are open. Don't, don't miss your opportunity. <laughs> you know the name. You know the power of the name. <laughs> Why don't you just begin to call on that name <laughs> over your life. <laughs> Whatever you need in prayer, <laughs> just begin to call on that name. <laughs> Jesus, we need you, oh God. <laughs> Jesus, I need you in my finances. <laughs> Jesus, I need favor. <laughs> Jesus, I need you on my job. <laughs> Jesus, I need you at my school. <laughs> Jesus, I need you in our marriages. <laughs> Jesus, we need you in the church. Jesus, we need you out in the world. Jesus, we need you to heal our bodies. Jesus, oh God, be over everything, Lord God, in the name of Jesus.